Hey, good morning, everyone. So we'll be starting the session now. So we can see a few people has been joining because a few people referred our recurring link and joined in another meeting. So we have informed them and they are um, switching to this uh, new webinar link. So good morning, everyone. Uh, so once you are ready, so can you just confirm it on the chat window? Yes, we got a good response. Yes. Good. So yesterday uh, was the first session. So we had a discussion about um, understanding the cloud certifications and we had a discussion about uh, a different concept of uh, the traditional infrastructure so we understood uh, before moving to the cloud or the existing infrastructure available in your office is typically using two concept what was the two concept so can anyone it's been comment on the chat window so let's do a recap of what our modules we have covered yesterday. So yesterday we had a two discussion on the traditional deployment model has been currently available in the uh, infrastructure. Can you just confirm on the chat window? So let me do assessment. It's been like, yeah. Nuri saying like it's been on-prem and collocation, right? So let's wait for Ronaldo also, it's been commanding the same thing. Yes. So the old discussion was around, is about the how data center or the how infrastructure it's been configured. Yes. Roy, we are talking about the different type of the infrastructure. Currently, it's been available. So the event or the all our technical discussion was around how to move the existing infrastructure into a cloud. So like how this can be more your infrastructure in the cloud and we uh, thought of discussing about a different resources or a different technical terms or how we can uh, learn a cloud technology. So then we had a kind of a uh, feeling like, hey, before moving to this cloud, let's try to understand how the IT infrastructure has been currently it's been configured. Right. So that was a discussion. Now. We understood there are two type of the IT infrastructure is been currently it's been available in an organization uh, that you are going to manage or that you are going to move into Microsoft infrastructure. Clear? So can you just comment what is the on-premises uh, solution? Can you just put it in a single word? like I'm just doing assessment because just to ensure that as i said yesterday uh, i need to ensure that we all are it's been on the same page so can you just comment in one line you don't need to refer google and all. so from your experience or from the yesterday's discussion what do you understood about the on-premises one can you comment in one single line so it's an assessment for you it's a self-evaluation can you just comment what is the difference between on-prem and collocation one? Can you just comment in one or two lines? It's a self-evaluation. So Roy has been commenting. So expecting all the members to be coming. So this take it as a kind of a uh, proactive measurement from your side. It's be like just to a self analysis or a self-assessment. So physical as boundary, yeah. The physical infrastructure, it's on the on-premises. It's on your building, okay. Yeah, it's been different infrastructure, okay. I request all the members to be uh, participate in this kind of exercise, so, okay. Even though if you know answer or people is posted, um, don't worry. So this will give you a confidence to you. So like, that's from my experience. Like, uh, you may be just watching a sessions and like a movie, then do not be, um, that you will forget like after a week. So if you're putting all this on command, that will be feeding your memory. So that's the reason I'm asking you today this exercise. So 
it's a psychological approach so to put it on the chat window so that will feed your mind so tomorrow if someone is asking like what is on prom or a collocation so you'll be able to recall that so thank you team um look like so we got a good feedback or good comments on this uh, exercise okay so typically in a summarize if you're summarizing this one we have a two model or the two mode of infrastructure is been currently available in your office the first one it's been on premises one and second one is been a uh, collocation one if you're considering both the one we understood uh, the capex cost is been owned by us because the equipments which you are currently it's been using it's been owned by you so that there is the one challenge currently we are facing so we had a study discussion and debate and it's argument on the understanding this concept what are the options we have so we understood what are the different data center ts has been currently it's been available but then as um, uh, the members is posted on the chat window it's been like in a collocation one we are involving a third party who has been responsible for the power cooling and uh, physical security so that is the difference between one in a on premises one it's been or it's been handled by you so this is the difference between a collocation and on prem one now let's move to the next topic that's called the cloud now collocation and on premises you are a subject matter expert now so you understood what is the difference between colo now people may be getting a question now if if this is colo and on premises one what is about the collocation one right so let's move to that so let's move to the next slide i'm sharing my secondary monitor just give me a second i'm just moving to the last slide which you had discussed as well so yesterday's session we concluded with a um question it's been like to like let's do a some self study on uh, uh, server virtualization right so that was the discussion happened yesterday now right now we had a discussion it's about configuring a on premises or it's been configuring a uh, collocation one right so what is the one second okay now in both the model if you're considering i'm just going back to the whiteboard once again so now if you're considering a collocation one or it's been on premises one in both the model you are physically mounting or you're physically deploying the physical servers is based on the customer requirement right for example like how a user it's been requesting a sql server or a ias or a web server uh, typically you will be installing or it's been configuring one physical server i'm just giving like a scenario it's like we need an sql server so in a normal in your office scenario so we'll be requesting this uh, uh, change through a change request or we'll be requesting through a purchase or whatever and we'll be implementing a physical server for example like i installed a windows server 20 19 on top of that i installed a sql server so i installed one server it's called a now nelvin is coming and requesting like he need a, another web server so typically nelvin also it's been requested a server so i have installed another server called b it's called i installed windows server 2022 and i have installed is so this is the server is been B. Now I have another user, so like a Sandosh bot came and told like they want another server for the Oracle one. So Sandosh has been installed at Oracle application on top of a Linux or it's on the Unix, whatever. And now I have another user also, it's been coming. Mohammed also has been came here and told like hey need some um server for configuring a routing so he also installed a windows server 2012 and routing feature so what are the technical challenge 
uh, just think a scenario you are working this kind of a situation we have sandosh and it's mohammed and ajit and everyone has been requesting for a service what are the challenges as a data center manager or a data center administrator you are going to face in a operational role right now can i just post it on the chat window right now we have a four servers now i have another 100 users is requesting similar kind of uh, uh, requirement so what are the challenges as a cloud or not a cloud admin we don't know what is a cloud right now think like you are a system administrator or you are a manager in your organization so just want to know what are the challenge as a resource or as a manager you are going to face in this kind of a scenario can you just comment it on the chat because uh, um, unmuting and discussing it's been uh, it'll be difficult because we have a large audience we have yeah we got a one option it's been like storage and space is going to be one issue so thank you Lebanon for that question yeah next is saying like there is a load balancing part unnecessary usage of this this is Mohammed is saying this one and Irvin is being like this is a space issue yes we got another uh comments from again it's been like the physical space constraints yes next also it's been pointing another uh point from a traffic point of view like a network point of view and so then we have opex and the cost is been yes so so we have uh, another business point of view question also concern also we got there can be an opex or operational cost is becoming space and downtime yeah uh, just post your views like if you are in this kind of a scenario imagine that and see like what are the issues you are going to face it multiple windows for a data center yes yes roy's question is being uh, it's been coming more uh, from a security point of view uh, good uh, good answer roy uh, so so let me let me want to let us know your views on this kind of a scenario uh, from your mind it's like it's yeah difficult to establish a separate mission for all of it okay so all these points are valid like load balancing storage or a space uh, i can all these answers are right so thank you for that uh, i'm taking this one is the first prior two item is a priority or it's been like i can factor for you one it's been like space is going to be a constraint here, right it's going to go space is going to be issue for us now think from a scenario it's been like you have a 200 users has been available in organization uh, now everyone is coming and saying like hey i need a server i need a server now one it's been like purchasing a server also it's going to be a headache because cost is an important factor for any business right yes we need to satisfy the client i'm agreeing to that point but at the same time from a business point of view we need to think about what is the cost is involved in this right so we need to think about the cost uh part also second thing is like implementing this all resources right you have a hundred or a 200 servers to be mounted in a data center space is going to be issue all are agreeing with this point because all your answers is being pointing the same so all of us know space is going to be issue because we cannot uh, uh, keep this uh, servers in a normal space where you don't have a proper cooling or a temperature controlling facility or it's you have a proper physical security we cannot go and dump the servers as it is right because the customer data is available inside that so we need to have some facility where properly you are secured and there is a proper role based access control is being enabled and we need all kind of other measurement also needs to be taken care of. so space is going to be issue second one is been as someone has been mentioned like opex or a capex cost that has been an important factor right from a business point of view the cost is an important one third one it's been like uh, i think someone has been commented here we need a skilled or a technical resource who can manage the servers also manage this infrastructure also is not on that only the managing the server if i am configuring 100 servers there is a lot of dependent resources also required right you need a uh, router or a switch or you need a firewall or other components also you needed for uh, connecting or uh, communicating each other also right so that also it's been important on this aspect so skilled resources also it's been one of the other concern or see the other 
a factor which we need to consider like in case if you are going on a on prem or in a colocation one so we need to have a skilled administrator or i can say like skilled resource one is getting a resource is a problem second one is a cost for this resource also it's going to be a problem yes scalability and uh, availability all these are the other points now third thing i my business is been approved all these things now from a system administrator point of view or from a architect point of view if you are analyzing this servers i'm taking a computer a or a server a or server b or a server c or server d this servers or this all this uh, computers or this uh, hardware maybe came with the highest configuration right this may be having a 128 gb of ram and it's got i7 processor or the latest uh, server processor got sign uh, uh, or a uh, net app storage on the back end it got uh, gigabit or a uh, higher configuration on the network aspects but as a administrator or as a analyst if i am a doing a utilization report for example like i'm considering like the sql one which is currently ajit has been using if you're observing your laptop or in your office servers also if you are analyzing most of the situation utilization is going to be a 2 to 3 percentage of the total configuration only right now if you want if you have any doubt just press control alt delete button on your computer go to the task manager you may be getting a window for a task manager right click on the task manager you may be seeing like the percentage of your network or a disk or a cpu right it may be 3 to maybe less than 1 percentage only may be using right if you go to this uh, performance tab or it's the process tab you may be able to understand if you are going in say the performance tab just take your control alt delete and go to the task manager or right click on the uh window it's on this here you will be getting option called task manager click on the task manager you may be seeing like a performance tab. task manager window is coming and go to the performance tab if you are observing your laptop performance you may be seeing like it's been cpu maybe it's like a 5 percentage memory utilization maybe it's like out of 16 gb you may be using only 5 gb or a 2 gb this utilization if there is a ssd maybe say 0% or maximum it's maybe reaching around 7 percentage ethernet percentage also it's going to be a normal gpu percentage also it's been going from right this is your laptop scenario think from a server point of view where you are installed highest configuration Give me a second. Okay, so if you're analyzing the servers which currently are implemented in your data center. you can observe the similar kind of utilization report right it may be using only 5 percentage or a 6 percentage or a uh, 100 percentage now can we think a uh, solution something like uh, uh, instead of giving a uh, multiple servers like is there any possibility of merging this role because if i'm using a 5 percentage here you are using a another 10 percentage here another 5 percentage here is there any possibility of merging the servers so this was the one of the concerns um, everyone was facing it's been a few years so this has been it's been sorted out with the type of a technology called virtualization what is the technical term we are using it's been avoided or it's been sold with the help of a concept called virtualization it's been the concept called virtualization now what is the virtualization topic 
this i'm just giving a scenario i am a user okay i'm working in an office i'm doing only one set of activity i have another user who is doing another set of activity you have another user doing on another um, uh, just let's take a uh, scenario it's like you are working in a college i have a professor is an english professor i have another professor is for the chemistry i have another professor for uh, uh, maths now i have only five students in my college so as a owner what is the best way of uh, handling this situation here i'll be putting only a single resource who can take all the subject right because i have only um, i have only few students only is available the utilization is low so in that kind of a situation we will be deploying or a person who can all handle all this role similar way since the utilization is been less we are thinking about the merging of the resource so with the help of that you are able to configure or you are able to uh, configure all the service on in a single server now i have a question like virtualization will be yes it's all depends upon nas what is the configuration you are using on the back end i'm coming to that point now we understood utilization was one of the major concern in the past so uh, yes roy we have a cloud solution is available right now we don't know that is what is cloud i'm i'm reaching i'm trying to bring all you people into this cloud solution okay right now we started our journey from a on premises one now we moved we are taking a baby step we moved a next concept called virtualization and the next step will be the cloud okay i'm taking all you people into the same cloud solution since this batch is a mix of batch that the reason we are starting from a scratch if any members from this batch already got know or is already aware about the virtualization concept or the cloud basic take this session as a session as a brush up session because it's a mix of batch we cannot go directly on to this uh, uh, cloud configuration what because we want all the people uh, to understand or follow the session we want uh, the session to be fruitful because you are spending your personal time for uh, understanding this concept or enabling yourself so we want everyone to uh, travel on the cloud transformation to, to that so that the reason we are starting from a scratch and we are taking time also so like a spoon feeding kind of thing we are going it's time is not a matter for us it's because we end of the session we want all the people to understand the concept that the reason we are taking a time it's been clear in case if someone is already aware of this one take this as a kind of a brush up size and if you have some additional input we have please share take this even as a kind of a technical event share your knowledge with other members okay in case if i miss some point or if i have a different opinion or you may be experience some this one share your all your experience and knowledge that will be useful for the people who may be attending this event in the first time so let me go back to this uh, virtualization one so right now we understood a concept which will allow you to merge this kind of a service so this topic is known as a virtualization now how this is been doing it's been doing with the help of a concept called hypervisor have you heard about a concept called hypervisor anyone anyone from the batch it's been heard about a term called hypervisor yes nas is a yes few people who wrong is heard about this one any other members if you're not heard please mark this also roy is not heard about this one be open and post it on the chat okay so we'll be able to okay so hypervisor is been a uh, kind of a software or we can consider as it's been like yeah it's sangeetha it's been uh, same concept like a vm like you may be heard about hyper v or a vmware the same concept is called a virtualization all your vmware or hyperware everything is been uh, it's using this technology so technically hypervisor is kind of a software or it's been uh, kind of a firmware which will be using the term we are using here it's called hypervisor what is that term if you want you can not down your e note or it's been the notebook the term is called hypervisor it's a kind of a program 
this you can install on in your hardware right now you are using a hardware right right now you're using generally right now how you're installing your laptop right now all of us are using your thinkpad laptop or a lenovo laptop or ipad apple mic right if you want to i'm just taking a scenario how currently you are using your laptop you go to your laptop right you go. i'm not a good dryer okay so oh. think like this a box okay this is your laptop okay right now how you are installed your operating system on your laptop you connected the cd drive or a dvd drive or a usb on top of your hardware you install your operating system right this may be windows 10 or windows 11 or send os or a mac os so it can be any flavor which you are comfortable and you are flexible right so right now you install the operating system on top of your hardware you're agreeing with this point if you're agreeing request you to confirm through the chat because this is a confusing topic i want you to be on the same page so if you're good with this comment it on the chat window It's a confusing topic so uh, yes agreed okay this is the agree so if you are agreeing this one uh, just comment it on this one so so we all will be on the same page sandosh also agree okay Hello, Robin. Hello. Sorry, I was muting on mute. Yeah. One second, I'm just uh, uploading this Hyper-V uh, presentation. Just give me a second. So right now we understood in your laptop scenario, you are installing the operating system on top of your hardware. Now, when it is coming to the server side also, so I'm just taking a scenario like in your data center. You configured a Dell or a PowerEdge or a HP server or a Cisco UCS server. Technically, like you will be uh, taking this as a rack server or a blade server. This will be you mounting on in a rack, right? Once it's been uh, it's been mounted on a rack, you will be using a KVM switch or connecting use with the help of a DVD drive or a remotely you will be installing the operating system whether it's been a rack server or a blade server you will be installing an operating system generally it's been like a server operating system uh, this can be microsoft windows server 19 or windows server 2022 uh, unix flavors like a red hat linux 7 point or it's been like a sun solaris or a citrix so this kind of a server operating system generally we are using 
and top of that you will be using a different server service this can be active directory or if it is in a unique scenario this can be ldap or this can be dns or a dhcp or ias or a routing and remote access or a firewall service so all this application or service we will be installing on top of the operating system now we learned a new technology that's called um, kind of a software or it's kind of a firmware which will allow you to virtually you can divide the configuration of your server because um, in a kind of a um, scenario it's been like the right now the situation we have been observed like you are not able to utilize the entire configuration of your infrastructure that is a confirm that is the concerns we had so what we are going to do we are simulating or we are using a set of a software that will allow you to do a partitioning of your resource that means you have a hardware configuration okay right now you are using a 16 gb of your ram now out of the 60 gb normally this is using only 2 gb so we decided like instead of using a two computer you are moving all the applications or the all the services to this same server and you can use utilize the entire configuration of that particular infrastructure now how will i do that i'll be using a concept called hypervisor so this will allow virtually you will be able to do a partition of this one is not a physically is not that administrator is going with a knife and breaking this hardware into two pieces or a three piece no you will be installing this bit software program that's called hypervisor one of the software program is allowed it's been installed the firmware is enrolled virtually you will be able to configure multiple computers on that particular server so technically if you are seeing this hypervisor is been generally classified as a two mode that is known as a type one hypervisor so if you are seeing or it's maybe yesterday told you to do some kind of a uh, brush up of your uh, uh, this topic this is a basic technology okay because this this is coming or it's been connecting with the uh, cloud because of the back end all the vendors are using a hypervisor that the reason i thought like below some discussion is around this one now if you're considering hypervisor you have it two more this software can be installed one is known type one hypervisor second one is known as a type two hypervisors in some books this has been referred as a hosted hypervisor or this is also known as hosted hypervisor type one has been known as or this also known as native hypervisor or few books or a few blogs this has been mentioned or it's been represented as or this has been called as bare metal hypervisor also so end of the session you need to understand hypervisor is a kind of a software that allow you to do a virtual partition of your resource so resource can be a cpu or it can be ram or it can be a storage any resource it's been uh, it's available on that particular box or the hardware it's been virtually it's been configured with the help of a hypervisor so these are the two type of um, um, mode it's been available that is called bare metal and another one is called hosted hypervisor this concept uh, um, i have seen like when uh, when i was in college like um, i heard this like the concept is been first introduced in 1973 I remember like in 1973 the first thesis about this technology has been announced so i remember like there was a person called robert uh, uh, goldberg was the first person who introduced this technology so that's not really ma not matter here in that show this one 
this is just information i'm sure so it's a 1973 onwards there was a lot of research and uh, r&d has been happening on this one the first this term is been introduced in 1973 by a person called robert kolberg and uh, after that uh, this been came in uh, uh, in 2000 after 2000 onwards this technology has been introduced now let's go back to this uh, type 1 and type 2 right now we understood there is a two mode this can be installed now let's try to understand what is the difference between these two now in a type 2 and the type 1 the major difference which you can see here it's like how this hypervisor is been working now this hypervisor we right now we understood this is been responsible for creation or a management of the vm so basically it's abstracting whatever the software is or it's been using the hardware right so this is allowing you to independently if you're allowing you to create a virtual machines now when it is coming on the hypervisor so it's a two mode this has been available right so the first mode case it's called the type one or a bare metal one i'm just writing this is a bare metal one here Net type one, you have a hardware. Okay, in a type one hypervisor, on top of your hardware, you are directly you are installing the hypervisor. Okay, there is a the op the option right now. Uh, if you are taking a type one one, uh, you are installing type one hypervisor directly on the hardware getting the point so this similar like your uh, um, operating system so like you have a type 1 hypervisor is been available uh, so on top of that you are installing the hypervisor now if you are seeing a market there is a lot of products it's been available in the market now you may be heard about a company called vmware right so you may be heard about a company called VMware, uh, vSphere, let me be generally it's been mentioned as a VMware, vSphere or EXSI, right? So this is one of the firm who has been into this hypervisor one. No, OS has been not considered as a hypervisor, okay? Next, I'm, I'm coming to that point, okay? Right now, let's have a discussion on the type one, whatever point you are, next has been pointed this way, type two, I'm coming to that point. Hold for some time. So type one case, you are getting a software like this, okay? VMware is one of the uh, leader or it's been the vendor who has been providing a type one. So this has been later different version has been available. It's been started from 3.5, 5.5. There are different versions it's been available here. That's called vSphere or the VMware is one of the leading vendor available in the market. Another vendor has been like our Microsoft product that's called Hyper-V. So Hyper-V is the another vendor or is Microsoft is the uh, another product it's been generally we are using the market or you have a send or as a citrix servers also you can able to see in the customer play send or a citrix send servers or you can able to see something called rh ev that's called red hat enterprise virtualization so it's called red hat also having this product so red hat is available and you can able to see in some customer place or some organization maybe using a term called kvm that's called kernel based virtual machine that is called KVM. This is an open source. So these all are the some of the lead images. There are n number of products available in the market. I took few vendor who generally we are using a custom place. Most of the leading vendor, I five vendors I have taken. So these softwares will be installing on top of a hypervisor. Now on top of this, you will be getting a console. Okay. On top of this, you will be installing your guest operating system the operating system is called vm right so your vm will be installing here that's called the computer like it can be windows server 2019 you can create another operating system linux you can install windows 10 you can able to install an operating system like this this is generally known as guest os or this has been considered as a vm that's called virtual machines okay now on top of the virtual machine if you want you can install the applications it can be ms office or it can be active directory or a dhcp or a dns this can be installed on top of this so this kind of a model generally known as a 
type 1 hypervisor. Now, in the case of a type 2, this has been uh, something different. It's been like, uh, uh, it's been using like uh, in a different mode. In a type 2 hypervisor, first you will install the server operating system. You will install a type 2, you will install a uh, just a normal operating system. And top of that, you will be installing the hypervisor. Okay. You got you are getting the my point. So you are installing the first server operating system. Then on top of that, you are installing the hypervisor. So you'll be installing a next hypervisor here. So the next first you will be installing operating system. On top of that, your hypervisor will install. On top of that, you can install multiple guest operating system. On top of that, you will be installing your app. So there are a lot of other vendors also it's been available in the market who has been providing this. You maybe heard about a uh, product called uh, um, VMware Workstation, right? Maybe doing for your lab. You maybe use a uh, product called VMware Workstation. So it's called VMware Workstation. VMware Workstation is one of the product or Microsoft Virtual PC is the another product. You have a virtual box has been available. Yeah, someone has been already commented on the chat window. You have a virtual uh, box has been available and you have a Oracle virtual box also. It's been available. These are the couple of the uh, vendors who has been providing this type two one. So typically this hypervisor has been depend on the operating system. So this in case if this operating system is been corrupted or if this operating system is not booting, all other VMs who has been depend on the hyper are also it's going to be down. Generally, this type two mode of hypervisor, generally we will be using labs only. You will not be using a production scenarios. So this is generally using like where you want to do some cell study or some uh, research if you want to in that kind of a situation only uh, people are preferring or using a type 2 or hypervisor so in the production scenarios or in a customer places generally we'll be using a type 1 now end of this class you need to understand virtualization is a kind of a technology which is allowing us to uh, uh, utilize your servers or it's in the maximum with the help of a firmware or a, this kind of a software. Now, people may be thinking like, way Robin has been discussing a virtualization today. The reason behind it's like, your cloud technology has been going to use virtualization technology in their data center. Because in the moment when you are creating a VM or a storage or a network, backend configuration or the backend technology is server virtualization. That the reason thought like we'll have some discussion is around this one because the moment uh, you are creating a virtual machines on a Microsoft or a compute engine on a Google side backend this has been going and depend on the server virtualization technology. So this is the topic right now we discuss. It's been like uh, server virtualization. So uh, before the one second, I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah. So server virtualization has been one of the enabler for the cloud computing. And this has been allowing you to uh, create a, a, a VMs or a, in a infrastructure in a customized mode. And typically you have a type one and type two hypervisors are available. And then we had a, a discussion is around like what are the type of the hypervisor we had. So one was known is known as a native one, this is called bare metal one. And you have a type two also in a type two, First, you are installing hardware. On top of that, the operating system is installed. On top of that, hypervisor installed. Then you are creating S2 OM. On top of that, your application is with installed. And here also, you are not using a um, base OS. Directly, you are installing hypervisor. On top of that, your VMs. And on top of that, your um, application has been come. So this is about the server virtualization. End of this session, you need to understand. Cloud is using a server virtualization on the backend i'm just pausing here so in case if you have any questions we can have a discussion is around that 
yeah it's a promox is an open source uh, uh, virtualization generally this has been considered as a type 2 wait is a type 2 uh, kind of a hypervisor so i used one or two times this is a promox it's an open source one any question can we use can we use a type 1 daily yes if you have a facility or if you have any hardware or if the software is been available with you you can go for that generally it's need a license so if you have that facility you can go for that there is no issue at all can you state any example for a type 1 hypervisor uh, sandosh already i uh, pasted on the chat or is in the whiteboard uh, in case if you are not seen that type 1 we have a uh, vmware vsphere is one example microsoft hyper v is one example red hat uh, arch ev is an example or a sense server or a citrix sense server is another example or you can consider kvm also this all are it's been a type 1 hypervisors generally we are using in production scenarios so the type 2 uh, type 2 has a mother oil yes yes that can be uh, the right word yes we have a mother oil which has been available that's called the base oil what is the purpose or benefit of uh, hypervisor so benefit is been like uh, you are getting or you are able to utilize this configuration or it's a uh, you are able to uh, um, what we can say like you are able to utilize the entire uh, configurations uh, compared to the traditional one so right now in, if you're considering the first case uh, you are not able to efficiently you are not able to manage your uh, servers right so efficiency is one of the factor because you can able to uh, run several missions on the uh, physical hardware second one is the portability is one of the options you can consider or the flexibility and uh, it's been providing a more speed also so generally if you are seeing any uh, hypervisor benefit uh, typically it's been considered as a four factor or a four benefits uh, generally it's been considered one is been speed second one is the efficiency and the flexibility and portability so these are the four major benefit we can see on here uh, NAS, it's been compared or it's been upon the speed or it's been uh, performance. This all it's been depends upon the what is the type of the backend hardware it's been using. Because if even though if I'm using hypervisor, this all it's been directly it's been uh, uh, depend on the what type of hardware you are using. Hypervisor is on a software which enabling to simulate the hardware, right? So it's all depends upon what is the type of the disk technology you are using what type of processor you are using, what type of uh, memory technology you are using. It all depends upon what type of hardware you are using or implementing this one. So Mother OS can be supported uh, uh, Windows or Linux. Uh, almost all, so far, almost all the server operating systems nowadays have been uh, supporting the feature of virtualiz virtual virtualization. Now I'm just I'm from a completely from a Microsoft background. So in Microsoft we have a Hyper-V feature which you can enable in a server manager. So Hyper-V is the by default feature it's been available in the Microsoft. So other server OS also as my understanding they also having the similar feature is being supported. Now Roy answer has been already um, uh, covered. Uh, into can you just uh, confirm uh, this one Re rephrase your question you only posted a dedicated server is it an answer for for the previous question i'm not sure if you can just rephrase your question that'll be well and good what is the benefit of the hypervisor already discussed uh, assure, uh does the hypervisor have an advantage in assure compared to uh, exi St steven is asking this question steven it's been like uh, whether it's been assure or it's been a google cloud or aws all these cloud service providers are using a Hyper-V or a VMware or any of this virtualization technology on the backend. Uh, generally, um, uh, CSP won't say like what type of technology is generally using. 
but in Microsoft uh, case, I know it's been back end they are using Hyper-V because I've been associated with on the many of the implementations. So I know so like back end they are using a Hyper-V is the technology on the back end Azure has been using. This you can able to see like when you are implementing or when you are doing a diagnosing a booting related issue in the boot console, you may be able to see like when you are restarting this one, this has been pointing to Hyper-V. So maybe we can have some discussion uh, showing this in a troubleshooting class. So Steven, I think we can move this question uh, on a, a bucket right now, in the troubleshooting class. I think we can have some discussion and debate on that. Mother OS in the type two can be uh, Linux or yes, this already answered for her it's been supported. Uh, utilizing yes, so comparatively, which hypervisor is perform this one? Uh, next, I, I'll say it's only Microsoft, okay. Am I completely Microsoft Kate? So I'll say hypervisor is the best hypervisor. So uh, you have many brand vendors is available, but Hyper-V from my experience, Hyper-V has been good. Benefit maximum so yes, this is a benefit we can able to use. That's good. Can I ask the role of a mother OS in the type two? Uh, mother OS has been kind of a, a mediator between your uh, uh, hardware and hypervisors, whatever instruction you are getting from a hypervisor, uh, that will be passed to hardware through the operating system, especially RAID or it's been a kind of a resource management. Typically, I can say like a resource management has been uh, done on behalf of your hypervisor through the operating system. That may be the right one. Now, Sandosh is asking some scenario. Uh, let me read that. I have installed a VM where on workstation my laptop with the host OS Windows 10. Is it a type? Yes. So, Sandosh, you are, I understood like you have a laptop which has been running with the Windows 10. On top of that, for your self study, you installed a VMware workstation. Yes. That is a kind of a type 2 hypervisor because the VMware workstation, how it's been installed, this is be installed on top of the mother OS that's called Windows 10. So, the workstation is the product of a type 2. So, it's a type 2 hypervisor. So that, that you can able to on top of the uh, VMware workstation, you will be able to create multiple VM. Uh, with the help of that, you will be able to do your lab. Uh, but Sandosh, I have one advice for you. In case if you are using this VMware workstation, make sure that your networking is being configured in a host only mode, okay? Because many of the situation like in case if this laptop, if you are going and connecting your office, this will send staffing to the end their network in your office. So I have seen like many cases like people will be uh, installed a VMware workstation on the laptop. In office, they will go and connect their, plug their laptop, the same office laptop, and they will start broadcasting to the end their network. So that will make a lot of issues in your office that can lead to a lot of outages in your office. So in case, Sandosh, if you are using a VMware workstation on your laptop, go to the network setting. There you will be able to see an option called NAT bridge and host only mode. Make sure that your uh, lab is being configured in a host only mode. Otherwise, you may be going to face a lot of issues when you're plugging in this laptop in your office network. In case I'm just giving an example, like uh, you configured a DHCP service on your laptop and you connected this laptop in office network. So this DHCP will start giving an IP address to all the clients in your office. So that may lead to an outage in your office. So in case if you're using a VMware workstation, make sure that your network is being configured in a host only mode. In in my opinion, I'll use the type to, yeah. Roy, if that option is been good, if you're going for in a uh, lab or a self-study, then you can go for the type two. But Roy, don't use the type two in a production scenario or the customer place. In a customer place for a better performance or a better availability or the fault tolerance, you need to go for a type one hypervisor because type one only it's been giving all that kind of a, a high available features. For hypervisor application, your experience can Mohammed is asking like, uh, uh, can you give me some scenario for hypervisor application? Your um, in your experience, yes. In most of the customer place, Mohammed, it's been like uh, people won't be go for uh, installing a multiple uh, servers. Right now, uh, my past experience, I was managing almost a one lakh servers. So almost all the places were we were using a VMware and Hyper-V because almost 80% of my load was it's been running on the VMware and Hyper-V. So that's it. So people will be hosting a VXI host or a Hyper-V host. On top of that, the VM will be installed. VM are good for Windows. VirtualBox has been good for Relax. Uh, I didn't know it's been depends upon what type of the features you need and 
that's all depends upon the features because vm virtual boss or hyper v uh, all these products having different features is been uh, supported this all depends upon what type of infrastructure you want in your organization because some of the feature which is available in the virtual box is been not available on the vmware so mostly most of the custom place i have is been seen like virtual box has been a kind of a uh, where you have a lab or a dev environment you have that kind of a situation only generally we are going for a virtual box most of the production scenarios from my experience either it's been using a hyper v or it be using a vmware xsi only open stack has been a different kind of a concept uh, probably it's possible like uh, open stack and uh, kubernetes container uh, we can have some discussion possibly in the last day of the session so that may be the next emerging technology uh, in the market so probably i think we can have some discussion uh, possible on the last day of the session like uh, uh, what are the options we have what are the latest technology or the trend in the market uh, possibly we can have a discussion on the last day is that okay for you because otherwise it's be confusing everyone here because right now we just started we took the just uh, two baby steps so i don't want you people to be get confused open stack and kubernetes and uh, uh, python jenkins so i don't want you to be get confused so let's hold that question right away and possibly in the last day of a session once you implemented azure once you're confident in the azure platform we can have a discussion around uh, the cloud or the uh, open source part okay thank you i think uh, uh, almost an hour now uh, so uh, I know so we want to, to go for a uh, discussion on this one. Which one has been covered today? It's been like uh, we we are moving to this. Like um, uh, you posted an agenda this way. Uh, yesterday we faced uh, some technical issue and uh, we we should do the session to two hours. Uh, yesterday thought of covering up five hours. That's been reduced to two hours. So we are planning for this week. We are planning two hours of a session. So. In the 15 next uh, next next week also we'll be continuing this event with a two-hour session so because most of the uh, members here it's having some uh, time constraints we have because continuous four to five hours we are not able to uh, host event few people have a concerns we got in the feedback so we thought of like uh, let's go for a two to two and a half hour session and we'll continue in the next next week uh, uh, i'm on a vacation so next next week we'll have a session okay Yes, Paul. Also, we'll go for a break. Like I know it's been almost seven hour now. I want all of us to go for it, just a refreshment, and we'll be back. So let's take a five minutes break, and um, then come back. So till that, I'm um, muting this mic, and we'll be back by after five minutes. Thank you all. Okay, so all are back. So before break, all the discussion was around server virtualization technology. So we understood server virtualization is one of the enabler with the help of that the cloud is been configured. Now let's move to the cloud part again. So we had a discussion around the cloud and it been, in between we moved to the uh, basic or a dependent technology on the cloud side. Now, when we had a discussion on the on premises or a collocation one, couple of terminologies we have discussed, right? You may be remembering like a, a term called uh, OPEX or it's mean like, I hope you can see my screen. No, I think it's not game. Let, let me check it, so recheck it, just give me a second. I hope you can see my whiteboard uh, screen now. I'm sharing a presentation. Hope you can see. Not that okay. So presentation is not coming or.
Uh, Fatima, I need your help. Can you just share your screen and uh, just enable? Look like there is something has been locking. Yeah, look like there's some uh, issues because. I'm not able... Yeah, can you just share your screen and just because look like I'm not able to do that. Yeah, just yeah, because maybe locked or someone uh, locked with this my ID, I think. So I'm just blank screen, okay. Look like the team is not allowing. Uh, team, just give me a second. So before break, we share the screen, and right now, not sure. It's been like Facebook is not allowing us to share the screen. Yeah. Hello, Robin. Thank you, Fatima. Now I think our issue has been solved. Yeah. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah. So Fatima, you can post the attendance link. So Mohammed has been asking. I think few people is not marked yeah, that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And please post the Discord channel link also. Team, we are posting a Discord channel link. Uh, there you will be getting all the event details. So Fatima will be posting on the chat window and the feedback form and the attenders also. So apparently, when you're attending this session, requesting you to confirm that also. So we'll be getting the latest notification or the upcoming events details, program details, and you'll be getting all your email. So keep follow us and uh, uh, like your Facebook page also. Now, let's go back to the session. When we had a Azure uh, on-premises or discussion, we came or through a two terminology. It's called capex and opex one, right? So we have a capex and you have a opex also. There are two technical or a terminology or a financial term we had dis discussed. So let's try to understand what is this. So capex is generally known as capital expenditure. This is something like the amount of the money which you are spending for purchasing your asset or it's been the amount of the money you are spending for the um, purchasing your equipment that generally it's been considered as a capex cost so capex is nothing the spending of the money for your infrastructure that is been generally it's been considered as a capex cost uh, if i'm just giving an example right you may be able to see like these all can be considered as a capex cost like the amount of the money you are spending for purchasing a server, the hardware cost or the storage cost, you may be implementing EMC or a NetApp or any other storage vendor or a technology if you are implementing. So that investment, or you may be using a router or a switch or a different WAN interface or a cabling or the different infrastructure for enabling your network, that amount is being considered or that investment is considered as a network cost. And you may be using a different a uh, backup solution in your organization right because backup is one of the uh, important uh, solutions all of name in the customer place right for example like uh, um, you may be implementing the beam solution or a semantic or so this kind of a solution is generally considered as a uh, backup solution so the investment which you are doing for the uh, for the backup and solution part it's been considered as a capex cost and you may be having a, a number of different mode of DR solutions you may be having, right? So you're having different DR exercise or different solutions or a redundancy plans you may be having. So that's it's all coming under the capex cost. Now operational cost means that the amount of the money which you are using for supporting your business, for making your service available online, so you may be having electricity bill or an air conditioning bill or, a, or engineer salary or the license cost. All this is being considered as a 
opex cost that's called operational expenditure cost so this can be the software oh, your purchase or the technical uh, person salary or the billing for your air conditioning so all this it's been coming under cap opex cost so technically financially we have learned two terms here one is called a capex and the second one is an opex one so opex is the operational cost and capex is the capital expenditure now i'm going for an assessment right now here so this is an uh, online exam okay let me see like uh, uh, let's do a self evaluation okay so you need to read the question and uh, post your answer on the chat okay you don't need to refer a google and don't worry about what others is been posting uh, this is a self evaluation for you okay consider this is an exercise for you not for robin or not for fatima or not for any one of these okay end of the session or end of this event we want to ensure that you are going with some knowledge okay so this is the first question for you uh, it's a in training assessment the first question is like you are using a tier 3 data center requires a five generator to provide enough power what is the minimum number of the generator which should be installed i posted that four options here a5 b6 you have a c10 and you have 11 so request all of us to post your answer on the chat window so yeah let's have it this you post your view and post your answer and let's have a debate to each other and uh, so because few people has been posted b5 6 11 10 so what is your answer for this one you don't need to worry about what others is posted okay you it may be wrong it may be right but try and attempt so few more people needs to question i think someone has been raise an hand so in case if you raise a hand uh, you can unmute yourself or you can just post your answer i think uh, ivy and gill has been raised your hand ivy and gill if you have any question request you to use the chat window for posting your question after this uh, poll yeah it's kind of a storage mirroring correct okay. so you may be comparing with the hypervisor on the storage point yeah similar like a storage kind of a mirror okay. so uh, yeah, so thank you team like it's been like uh, almost everyone has been tried and attempt for answering this one so this has been good i'm happy it's been like uh, at least we all are on the same page like i can see like almost 50 60 people has been commented wow oh, great so i request the rest of the members also try and attempt okay so yes so answer for this question is n plus 1 because two point you need to remember this is a tier 1 this one we had a discussion on the different data center tiers yesterday like 1 2 3 and 4 so this is been coming under tier 1 tier 1 is been always n plus 1 so we have a 5 so 5 plus 1 so answer is been 6 so congrats team members so it's been who posted the 6 and the people who has posted other answers no problem this is the first time you are hearing about this uh, uh, data center tiers at least you tried out so good job so thanks to all the members who posted the answer is been 6 so answer for this question is 6 now let's go to the next question i'm just uh, posted a uh, full stop here so we'll know this answer is been the above answers is been for the question number 1 let's go to the next question yeah so this is the qu next question for you this is uh, connecting with the a uh, traditional deployment model which you been discussed yesterday so you can post your answer on the chat window
so I think a few people still it's been pending so let's yeah a few more people still it's been thinking let's wait one more minute look like they are reading the question and just trying to trying for answering so all the members please try and no you select only one question don't post like a b c d select only one answer and <laughs> please your best yeah right and so i think they post a uh, few people has been coming in like a b c d robin you select which one you want <laughs> don't go for that kind of answer so like uh, let's put only one answer Okay, so answer for this question is, oh, now we have A, B, C, D, and right. Now people may be thinking like, hey, Ro let Robin decide which one is the right answer. Now let's answer this together. Now we have a two portions here. We have one is like this question is been connecting with a collocation facility. So when you're going for assessment, uh, my answer is been B for zero point zero zero dollar. So like. Uh, you're not confirmed or it's been because of that okay now this is like a two portion we have one it's been like this question has been discussing about the uh, capital expenditure and you have a, a collocation one also this question is uh, it's like in out of this a b c d which component has been coming under capex cost so we understood uh, what is a capex now right capex is the amount of the money you are spending for investing in an asset asset right so so you have a so in a um collocation one it's been like a, a power and cooling facility. Generally, this has been considered as a operational expense, right? So have a power and cooling facility here. This has been considered as a OPEX cost. Network connection also, it's been generally considered as OPEX. SLA also, it's been coming under that. So answer for this question is servers in the facility. So answer for this question is B. So the answer for this question is B. And yesterday also it's been Munal, it's been considered as an OPEX only generally. So attendance is already posted on that. Uh, the link is already posted uh, on the chat, Mahesh. So answer for this question is servers, the equipments or infrastructure which you are implementing in a customer place, it's been considered as a capex cost. Okay. So the answer for this question is um, it's been capex cost. Yeah, pay as you go model. There is a new terminology here coming. I know so we'll have a discussion right now. Now that's about the first portion of the event. So we learned the cloud certification. We understood the on-premises part. Now let's move to the next topic called defining a cloud. I'm just taking a one minute break. I need to just create an, a cloud account. So I'm just muting for a minute because I need to create an uh, account for this event. Just give me a second, okay? Give one minute.
So I'm back. I was trying to create a, a free account. Just checking some couple of new options. Okay. So we'll be Roy. So like we'll be continuing another um, 24 minutes. And so, so it's been two hours session. It's been planned today. Now let's go back and uh, discuss on the cloud point. Right now we understood the concept of the on-prem one. Now let's move to the technical part on the cloud side. We understood cloud is a solution. It's been upcoming or the emerging technology. So let's try to understand uh, defining a cloud technology. Right now we understood the cloud is a, a technology we have. So all even I'm just considering with a scenario. It's like all our modules will be going forward. We'll be discussing with the case studies and scenario. So we all has been working for an organization called Orange Company. I'm just giving a uh, uh, image. It's been a company called Orange or a Condozo.com. Now we decided, like all of us on this batch, like uh, almost 200 people in this batch now. So we decided, like, or the organization is decided, like, till now we are using a colocation facility and the on-premises one. Now the Paul and Roy and whoever is attended this one. They inform the CTO, it's like, hey, cloud has been one of the best technology we need to migrate. So they're given a, a proposal, Roy and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Robin and Ronald and Mahesh, what is given a proposal to the management, like let's move this one into a cloud. And we are going to get a lot of features on the Microsoft cloud. So now today onwards, we, the discussion is around what is an Azure technology? What are the services we have? How we can do a migration in a practical way? So we are considering a scenario which means like you're working for an orange company. The orange company has been decided like they are going to migrate the applications or the resource into Microsoft Azure. Now before moving this one, uh, we cannot move just as it is, right? Because if you are before moving this one, you have a client data is available. You want to know what are the technologies been supported on Azure. You want to evaluate that if this is it's meeting your expectation, then only you can do a migration from your on-premises or a colocation to a cloud technology, right? So let's have a discussion on this. Okay. Okay. So now the objective for this module two, it's been like the old event. Even though if you're considering uh, from a case study or a scenario, we are trying to align the session or it's been the event with a two certification program. It's called AZ900 and another one is called AZ104 program. Like end of this session, you will be able to clear AZ900 and 104 certification. Now what is the certification? Already we have covered on the last day session. So this module or this first chapter we are trying to cover two important points. One is being like, try, we'll try to understand the cloud technology. We'll try to understand defining a cloud computing and we'll try to understand different categories of a cloud also. You may be heard about like a hybrid cloud or a public cloud or a private cloud, or you may be heard about like ISAS or a PaaS or a SaaS. You may be heard about this one, but let's try to understand what is the difference between this. I'm a cloud engineer, I'm a public cloud engineer, or I'm a private cloud engineer, what is my job role? So this will be going to define during this session, okay? Now, let's define a cloud computing first. First one, it's been like trying to understand a scenario. It's been like, uh, uh, I'm just giving a example. It's been like, let's go back to your uh, uh, whiteboard. Now, all of us, it's been uh, um, in a vacation time. We used to go out or uh, like when you, we used to go out for a traveling, right? Or maybe in your office, you may be depending the uh, different mechanism or a transport mechanism for traveling to your office, right? Uh, anyone has been connected from your office today or you're still you're, uh, working from home? Can you just comment it on that? You're working from home or it's been like, uh, after this pandemic, have you moved to this uh, office culture back? Because I'm still using a uh, hybrid mode, like two days in office and three days, it's been still enjoying mom food and working from home. I'm a student, okay, that's good time next. So I guess at least you can enjoy life, right? 
yeah it's working from home i, I think home okay office few people has been moved to good good but office culture is good at least we we are getting a time for interacting with the many people site based telecom does not work work from home ro is been is good actually like i been working from home and i added weight now i added some 7 kg now this week so i need to go back to office working here at office okay attending from office okay it's a hybrid mode okay that's good work of work from home is a disaster yes wrong it's been like uh, no personal this one like uh, even though if your shift time is 8 hours we'll be spending 12 hours and it's hey nemzi is been loving the work from home okay <laughs> that's good okay good good so few people has been slow. okay now let's go back to the cloud computing part now you may be using a or different transport mechanism in your country right I and mean, because of it's a mix of batch we have uh, people is been connected across the globe uh it's been um, um we may be using the, i'm i'm a user okay i'm a this is a robin no i'm not a good driver okay think I, i'll write it this is a robin okay no i'm not a good driver okay think this is a robin okay i need to go to office okay okay now i'm going with my car okay i'm going with my car okay, this is a car okay i'll write it it's a car other people will think what is this <laughs> is it a server or a storage people may be confused right wonder so now if i'm going with a car into my office can you come and what are the challenges i'm going to face i know driving okay <laughs> so don't come and like you robin you need driving okay <laughs> so can you just yeah traffic is maybe it's uh, one of the uh, uh, issue so traffic and driving also i'll write it so driving also i'll write it so people will be so driving and traffic rough road okay yeah it's been raining time it's been rough road okay fuel expense that's been one of the uh, important portion okay accident okay i am a good driver man <laughs> so till and i am a good driver it's okay so weather weather also it's been an important point okay maybe bad weather yeah that's can be a, because it's been a distance also it's been matter time also it's been an important and parking also right it's parking also important right that is one of the uh, common problem i used to face like Uh, like uh, most of the times once once you reach office you will not get uh, space for parking right so this is one of the common issues all of us are facing like in case if you are going to office right so yeah so all of us know there are many concerns or it's been like many issues or it's been right so so this car it's been like who is been on this car right now it's been breakfast first then lord okay so Uh, so i think seven is be having a breakfast now okay so breakfast can be considered under uh, so if you are cooking breakfast seven that can be considered under isas okay so we'll have a discussion on the breakfast later with a cloud technology so if you are purchase from your outside your breakfast that is a sas okay okay now let's come back to this a car scenario so in this scenario robin is been owned the car okay so all these concerns we have so this is the kind of a technology which you are facing on prem so this car scenario compare with your on premises technology in a on premises technology like your car all the asset is been owned by you right you are agree with this point right now i have another scenario what is the another scenario you use the collocation facility means you i'm using another uh, type of a technology is called uber or a ola service uber or ola what is the advantage you are getting you are booking a cab using their app end of the transportation you are paying so based on the charge it's been like a pay as you go model right you are not worried about the driving 
you are not worried about the tax you are not worried about uh, oh, traffic oh, right no need to buy a car no fuel needed yes pay as you go motor right you don't need to worry you can enjoy your trip right end of the session you need to pay the bill through a net banking or through the cash or the soft cash or hard cash you can pay the amount right so this is the similar kind of your cloud technology right in a on premises one you are purchasing and you are investing and you are owning this one now compare this with a cloud technology it's been like you are not worried about all these factors right end of the your journey or end of your travel you are paying as per the bill right like you booking if you need it for a two hours travel you are paying for based on the bill or the consumption right same scenario it's in your electricity also right right now you are sitting in front of the system and attending this event now in front of you you may be having a switch available which you can flip it then you can able to see the power is been coming on the tube or a fan whatever so we are not worried how this electricity is been produced right right how this is been generated is it using a diesel or a coal or any other mechanism right end of the month you are paying the electricity bill to the vendor right it can be government vendor or it can be private vendor right so based on the consumption or the based on the how much unit you consumed for your electricity you are paying this one you are agreeing right yeah based on the consume, how much con electricity you are consuming now bring all these examples into your it world now think a scenario which be like you need a server for example like i am working in a development team i need 10 server now i have a two option have one option is been like i am working as a development engineer i need to evaluate some product for a three month one option i have available in front of me is like three month for the three month project i can purchase a 10 servers i'll maybe uh, purchasing some n number of a dollar i'm purchasing after three months if the project is been decommissioned what will happen to this servers this will be an asset nobody will be using them right second one it's been like for three months instead of purchasing the server you are taking this servers for a rent after three months you are decommissioning this one and you are paying only for three months which mode you will opt if you are from a finance background or if you are from business point can you comment it on the chat window which mode you will be prefer this is the first option is option a second one is been option b if you are in this situation which mode you will opt can you just comment it on the chat window Okay, so we will be preferring the rent method, right? So that means based on the consumption, like how, what is the type of the configuration you are using, what type of the VM you are using, or what type of the operating system you are using, you can take all this resource for a rent. Instead of a purchasing this one, you are taking all this resource for a rent from a CSP. CSP stands for Cloud service provider clear now so you are a cloud master now cloud technology is over now you got the concept so technically if you're speaking i'm just going back to the slide so cloud computing is something like 
is generally people may be having Microsoft is a CSP. Yes, yes. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, or Alibaba, or it's an IBM, or VMware, Red Hat, all are any or any vendor who has been providing a cloud technology. Generally, this is known as a cloud service provider. So we have a, a number of vendors is available. Uh, Fahad, we discussed this point in the day one session. Look like you missed this one. You can just go back and refer the recording. In case if you have any doubt, possibly in the next event, you can post it on the chat window. Now, right now, we considered it two examples here. It's called electricity and Uber. So both the case we understood. Based on the consumption, you are paying the bill, right? Now, similarly, in the case of a cloud also, instead of purchasing this one, you are taking a resource for a rent from a vendor. Now, people may be having a question like, eh, is how to define a cloud computing? So people can say like, hey, this has been hosted in somewhere. No. So for giving a definition, there is an organization called NIST. It's called, if you want, you can note down. It's called US-based organization. It's called National Institute of Standard and Technology. They're given a beautiful explanation for cloud computing. So they're given, like if you go to Microsoft, or internet portal and NAST PDF if you're typing, they are given a beautiful uh, definition for cloud computing. So if you can download this one, so this is the page, this is the PDF you will be able to download for a definition. I'm just pasting the link also on the chat so you can able to download. So this is the PDF document. In the PDF document, very beautifully they have explained what is it cloud computing? So if you go to the page number six, I remember. So you can just come down. In the page number six, yes. In the cloud, they are given a beautiful explanation in the of, uh, cloud computing. Like if someone wants to explain or they want to define this infrastructure model is a cloud computing, this has to meet a couple of characters and this can to meet a couple of a feature also. So NASD is saying, if any model, if you want to uh, call this as a cloud computing, NASD is giving a definition like this. Cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient and on-demand network access to a shared pool of a configurable computing resource. Saying that this is like you are uh, sharing a resource between the uh, different applications or a VM that can be rapidly provisioned and released with the minimum management of efforts or a service provider interaction. Saying that any kind of a configuration with a less human interaction, you will be able to configure the technical term. Generally, we are using a pro in an operation role is called provisioning. So this is a technique like if someone has been configuring something, the right technical word generally we are using IT infrastructure is called provisioning. If you want to delete or something, the term generally we are using called decommissioning. So provisioning and decommissioning is a, uh, it's a general key terms. Generally, we are using operation role. So it's saying like provisioning and decommissioning can be configured for any IT infrastructure with a minimum effort. Now, if any model, if as to, uh, it's been, uh, uh, if you want to consider as a cloud, it has to meet a five characters. It has to meet a five character. One is called on-demand service. Second one is called broad network access. Third one is called resource pooling. And the fourth one is called rapid elasticity. And the last point is called measured service. Don't worry about these points, okay? What is this? We'll have a detailed debate on the next session. End of this class, you want to understand. Any cloud computing, if they want to meet uh, this cloud model, it has to meet five character. What are the five character? It's been on premises, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. And this can be implemented in a three service model. That's called SaaS. That's called software as a service. It can be configured as a platform as a service. Generally, this is known as a PaaS. It's called platform as a service called PaaS. And you have another model called iSaaS. That's called infrastructure as a service. It's called ISAS, and this can be deployed in a four model, uh, right? As per NAST, only four model, but there are other models also right now, it's been available in the market. 
So as per the NAST, this can be implemented as a hybrid cloud model, public cloud model, community model, and this you have a private model also. So these are the three deployment, four deployment model, three service model, and it has to meet five characters also. If all these points are meeting, then that model is known as a cloud computing. So let's go back to the slide. Now, NEST is given a beautiful explanation for a cloud. So in a summary, it's been like a, a cloud computing is been not purchasing any hardware. Instead of that, we are renting a resource, right? You don't need to purchase any hardware. Instead of that, based on the consumption, we are paying the money to the cloud service provider. Okay, so that, I hope that point has been clear. Now, we understood it's been supported. These are the models. It's been like uh, this has been supported, like a uh, three deployment model you have. You have a three service model you have, and you have a five characters also. So if all this model, it's been matching, then that solution is known as a cloud solution. Clear? If it is clear, can you just comment it on the chat window? Good. Good. I hope you are able to follow and uh, uh, we all are on the same page, I hope. Okay, so next event onwards, we'll be moving to a practical uh, scenario. It's been like we'll be connecting to Microsoft Azure portal and we'll be simulating all the cloud features also. So with this note, uh, with the cloud summary, uh, we are ending today's two hours of a session. And uh, yeah, Roy will be providing this one, okay? We'll be providing this slide. Okay, don't worry about that. So we'll be providing a PDF copy of all these slides, okay? Let's finish this um, module first, then I'll be sharing this PDF document. And uh, let me try to give you some books also, which can be referred for further this one, okay? So this is a two hour sessions we are planned for today. And uh, thank you for your time. So yes, we'll be allowing like uh, Nax is asking like, can we also get a chance? Yes, we'll be enabling you to uh, use Azure portal also. We'll be teaching you how to create a free account that can be used for the 30 days. So whatever lab you are doing, you can practice it. We'll give you some lab question also. So you can practice it's like a live or it's like once you're going back to home, you can practice it and next day you can um, ask the same questions we are here and in case if you want you can share the screen also okay so uh, Mohamed will have uh, one more week uh, will be available so next week um, I'm on vacation so the next week we'll have a daily we'll have a three hour or four hour session possibly next next week we'll finish this uh, complete AZ104 so thank you for the nice feedback Mohamed like uh, it's happy to know that you are uh, enjoying this session and uh, at least whatever knowledge I'm sharing, it's been useful to you. So, uh, so really thank you for that. So we're just trying to, just our organization has been trying to enable you guys. So it's been, so we are supporting. Uh, so like, uh, so we need your uh, support also like by sharing this uh, links or is the Discord channel, this one. So more people can be enabled with the uh, cloud Microsoft Azure skills. That is the vision of this organization. That is the purpose of this event also. Yeah, we are taking a baby step. I don't want you people, because once your foundation is Roy has been well and good, you will be able to move to any area, like you can move to architect or a DevOps. If the foundation is not strong, similar like how you build your home, right? If the foundation is not strong, um, we cannot do anything, right? That's the reason in a, uh, slowly we are going and, but ensure I'm trying to ensure that you are able to follow us and you are, it's been adding a value to yours. So, so thank you team and uh, uh, today we almost uh, reached the first step of your cloud one. So tomorrow onwards we'll be uh, going more into the technical part with a configuration one. Yes, we'll be trying to give you a PDF slide of whatever PPT we are sharing. We'll try to give you some additional document also which can be able to refer for this one, okay. So thank you team, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, so you took your personal time for attending this event. Uh, so thank you for uh, everyone for joining this one. Yes, we'll be sharing the material. So thank you team once again. Uh, so have a great day and uh, talk to you tomorrow.
Quiero oro.